What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Looking back, I was pretty lucky, actually. Thanks to having four different ultimate skills, Guy must have taken one look at me and assumed I couldn't be toyed with. Raphael was the one skill I absolutely had to keep under my hat, so that was the watchword for my future moves from that point forward. So I switched my way of thinking and assumed there was no way to hide skills, but that was actually pretty possible. If you've built up a skill to the point that it's completely your own, you can actually defend analysis skills from picking up on it. It wasn't perfect yet, but that was the result of the experiments I had been doing. What are you trying to say? Yes, I have a unique skill, but even if it's protected me from the desires, so what? My little pause there must have irritated Glenda. Hearing about these outside influences inspired her to play along with me. I wanted to give her an answer, but Raphael's roundabout descriptions were getting a bit hard to grasp. Parsing it into something I could reasonably explain took some time. Suggestion. Use hasten thought? Yes, no. Oh, yeah, there was that. I thought yes, cursing myself for not doing that in the first place. Now let's hurry this up and get Glenda on my side already. Whether your mind's clouded by greed or not is none of my business. But one thing's for sure. Your employer's got a pretty powerful unique skill running. That's true, isn't it? No comment. But I guess there's no denying it, either. Thank you. So, building on that, there was a man at the Founders Festival whose desires were being harnessed like that. His name is Gaia, and Shuna took care of him at the council this afternoon. The other festival visitors weren't subjected to interference that way, but some of the merchants were. And if a large number of people are brought under a skill's influence at once, chances are that the skill user is physically nearby. That's what I thought. Gaia was completely hooked by it, but the farther away you got from the skill user, generally, the weaker the skill got. Masayuki's skill was another monster, but the rumors that spread around about him only added to its synergy. That foundation is why the skill propagates so much further than he means it to. Influencing people's desires, meanwhile, was purely dependent on the skill's power itself. Beyond that, the user could utilize their strength or some other element to enhance the effect if they wanted. Basically, though, if you told me our skill user attended the Founders Festival, I'd certainly believe it. Along those lines, I had a suspect in mind. Someone I speculated about enough that I had so a look into her. Have you ever heard the name Maribel Razo? Raphael sure was cutting to the chase. The name came straight from the dossier so a prepared for me. She might have been trying to hide it, but Glenda gave me an ever so slight response. So that was a yes. My analyze and assess skill is pretty good, you know. Not only can it detect what skills a person has, but it can also tell if someone's hiding one of them. I was sensing the latter all throughout the Founders Festival, and one of the people I got that vibe from was that girl Maribel. I could see Glenda grow paler as I continued. I couldn't tell if she was getting hot or if it was a cold sweat running down her cheek. Either way, she was getting nervous. You, Maribel Razo, you said? The Razo family. Hmm, I see. Ah. Uh. Hanata interrupted Glenda just when she was about to say something. I should have been annoyed, but looking at Hanata, I didn't need to be. She had a delighted expression, like she had just found the answer. Glenda, meanwhile, made it clear that something had gone awry with her plans. Granville Razo, the founder of the Razo family and a former hero. I'm sure you know him, too, don't you, Glenda? That, and he was the real person behind Gren, the Sunday priest and head of the Seven Days clergy. Just as I thought, Hanata was at the truth now. I could see her mentally connecting the dots on the people she knew. Seven days, huh? Those guys we met before? I heard they had all died, but Granville's still alive? Nikolaus said he landed the final blow, but we're talking about someone who ruled over the Western Holy Church for centuries. I wouldn't be surprised if he survived it. So Maribel was the skill user behind all this greed manipulation. And Granville Razo, Gren from the Seven Days, was the head of her family. Um hmm. And if Gren's the kind of monster who can survive for hundreds of years, he's likely got the council in his pocket. So should we assume Gren's our mastermind here? No doubt about it. He's using Maribel's powerful skill for some kind of scheme of his. Hanata and I were now comparing notes, ignoring Glenda entirely. We basically had our answer, and Glenda had just lost her value to us. God damn it. Why do you know so much? I didn't even tell you anything. This is basically the same damn thing as me revealing it all. Hmm, yeah, sorry about that. You picked the wrong team to mess with, is all I can say. Raphael's too much of a talent to compete against. I suppose they might think you did, wouldn't they? I said. Well, that's what you get, Glenda. Said Hanata. A fitting end for a traitor. Damn it. I, I, they're going to kill me. Seeing Glenda whisper to herself, face drained of color, I felt a little bad for her. 
I had no intention of killing her, now that I had my info, I was ready to hand her over to Anglacia, but, yeah, wherever she went, she probably wasn't gonna be alive much longer, I figured she had the talent to flee to safety, but judging by how unnerved she was, she was dealing with some pretty ominous odds. Is this Maribel girl that powerful? I decided to ask. She's not that big an issue, but summoned people like me are bound by spells that we can't resist. The moment they decide I've fled from them, they'll crush my soul, and that will be the end for me. Gee, that doesn't sound nice. So you didn't betray Luminous out of your own free will? It was because you didn't have any other choice? Well, it's complicated. I wanted to throw myself upon the mercy of my god, but Granville's eyes were on me. Really, there was nothing I could have done about it. Maybe I was right to sympathize with her a little. Hanada was still giving her a cold look, but I think she wasn't so angry now. She wanted to murder her less, at least. No, you're right about that. If your soul's shattered, not even resurrection can help you then. Wow. Guess even Hanada can be gentle sometimes. She was still stern, but now she was looking for a way to help Glenda. But could I undo that spell? Understood. It is not a problem. Remove the spell? Yes, no. That was easy. And so it was off. It's over now. Lamented Glenda. Maribel. She's reading my emotions. I may not have intended to betray her, but she's gonna judge me now. So I let her in on what I just did. What? Yeah, no need to worry. We're all done with you, so go live whatever life you want. I'm pretty sure she thinks you're dead now. No, um, I wasn't talking about that. You mean to say you undid the curse ruling over me? Yeah, pretty much. But let me just remind you. You get hostile with me, and I'll show you no mercy. Yes, I suppose I'll look the other way. Hanada said. If I kill someone Rimuru let go, he'll never let me hear the end of it. But keep this in mind. You have betrayed Luminous herself. The Western Holy Church will never forgive you for that. Glenda was a strong girl. A threat. But now that she was free from the rule of Maribel or whatever, we didn't have much reason to remain hostile. If she started trouble with us again, we could always do her in then. Personally, I didn't think she caused that much of a headache, so I was ready to forgive her. Hanada seemed willing to do the same. I guess she felt she couldn't be so narrow-minded about someone I let go free. Besides, in a way, Glenda really was just following orders, not with her brain, exactly, but with the influence of the curse forced upon her. This time, I was willing to give her a slap on the wrist. So right, you're free to go. If you want to stay in my nation for a while, you're welcome to, but if you cause any trouble... Wait a, uh, I mean, wait a second. You're really letting me go? Uh-huh, I don't really feel like killing you anyway. If Sir Rimuru has forgiven you, we have no reason to defy his will. Said Soe. Not that you're much of a threat anyway. Benamaru added. They were willing to go with me, too. I didn't much appreciate the way they phrased it, but they didn't seem to have any complaints. They didn't see her as a threat, I imagine, which I wasn't too sure about, but to them, it was the truth. She'd never beat Benamaru's full effort, much less Soe's. Glenda struck me as the kind of woman who took a profit and loss approach to living, so she'd never do something stupid like challenge an unbeatable foe. Letting her go didn't seem like that big of a problem. As I convinced myself to take an optimistic approach, Glenda turned to me, kneeled, and said something extraordinary. I, I have a request. I'll tell you everything I know, so could you please give me some employment? I'll do anything you want, even dirty work, so please. Benamaru and I looked at each other, passing messages with our eyes. Now what? Do whatever you want. But, employment. What about the money? I had more to work with, but we were still sorting out salaries for my top officials. Working for free was still the norm around here. Hmm. I appreciate the sentiment, but we're still busy developing ourselves. We're pretty far behind in terms of organization, so we're not paying anyone a salary yet. Times like this, you gotta just be honest. No point trying to smooth over things. Huh? Glenda froze. But the next thing she said surprised me instead. Well, I'm used to that. I was stationed with the Master Rooks in the Holy Empire of Lubelius, but they didn't pay us there either. Dang. Even the three battle sieges, the best Lubelius had to offer, didn't get any money. They were paid in goods, and any money they needed, they were expected to scrounge themselves. They had an illustrious name to leverage, though, and I'm sure they got treated like kings wherever they went. Sometimes they'd receive payments for resolving crimes, too, so they led pretty decent lifestyles. Wait, so you get nothing, either, Hanada? She sure racked up a hell of a bill at the festival. No, Lubelius is an advocate for equality, so there's no public salary at all. We all get paid in goods. That was a surprise, but also a relief. Lubelius has a long, storied history, and it made it this far without salaries. Maybe we shouldn't be in any hurry to enact them, either. By the way, 
Thanks to running the Crusaders and the Imperial Guard, Hanata was given access to some of the government budget. Between that and monster hunting rewards, her income was actually pretty upper class. And yet you made me pay for you? Quit sweating the small stuff. I'm just saving money. She brought the kids all kinds of stuff, but with me, it's all, ooh, gotta save money. And actually, did Mjolmile pay her the labyrinth reward fees yet? The thought just occurred to me, but I didn't want to prod that hornet's nest. I was too scared to ask, so I didn't. But I'm pretty well known around the western nations. Even if I'm free, I don't have any work waiting for me. No nation's gonna hire me now, and I'm not cut out for adventuring work. Besides, you're on the cutting edge in culture here. So if you can guarantee me meals and a roof over my head, I'm good. Judging by how desperate Glenda was sounding, I doubted she was trying to deceive me. And I had reason to believe her. If Lubelius was in pursuit of the three battle sieges, everyone would have to assume a betrayal was the cause. She'd never find a nation willing to employ someone as politically touchy as her. Even if she became an adventurer under an assumed name, I could get it if everyone kept a prudent distance. If her cover got blown, she might have Lubelius and Granville come after her, too. Any kind of stable life was impossible. Yeah. I guess you'll have a hard time of it without support from somewhere. Right? So please, Sir Demon Lord. I know you don't believe a word of this, but I swear I'll stay faithful to you. There's no way I could believe it. But somehow, I just couldn't find it in myself to hate her. She was the classic spy film femme fatale, and I couldn't just abandon her. Can I leave her to you, Soe? As you wish, Sir Rimuru. I have no objection. Great. Thanks. And I can't have her turning traitor, so deal with that if it happens, okay? Absolutely. In terms of battle strength alone, I would rate her above Soka, so perhaps I could establish a special ops team for her that answers to me. Oh, kinda like a team all the problem kids get thrown into? Something like that, Sir Rimuru. I'd like to scout out members locally and elsewhere. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to Josie Ingada, Cradlestar, Mario, The Infernape King Battletube, Charlie Gale Tesoro, Luminous Eka, Night Gazer, Jesper KX, Vincent Adams, and last but not least, shout out to Austin T. I'll see you guys in the next video.